Today we're going to talk about some super cool Summer 20 release features and um, I do have another video on flow enhancements um, if you want to check that out but today's video is mostly going to be focused on lightning app builder enhancements and some other um, general features. Okay, um, let's get started. So I'm going to start with the most exciting feature um, of lightning app builder which is dynamic forms. Yeah, so you no longer have to go to lightning um, page layouts to just change fields, move fields around, um, control visibility based on uh, any any fields. You can do all that right from the lightning app builder. This is in non-GA preview and only available for desktop version. So when you're in setup, to enable this, go to setup, record page settings, and there is an option here. And if you I had a hard time finding this option, um, but you just need to scroll towards the right, hit on and save. Now it's uh, updated. Now let's go to one of my pages. I'm going to go to one of my custom objects that I created because I want to show you other features that's only applicable for custom objects. So let's go to this record and I'm just gonna hit edit page. And um, I'm just gonna clean it up so I can show you from the beginning. Um, okay. All right, let's delete this whole section. Now, um, I'm going to pull in record detail like normal and now you see right here you can configure record detail sections and fields right inside the lightning app. Upgrade to dynamic forms and start putting individual fields and sections anywhere on the page. So let's upgrade now um, and it will bring all the page layouts that you have available. Um, I want to, I just have one page layout. And since I already visited this once, it will also give you a nice um, one pager on what you can do with this. Basically, you have a accordion component, you can move fields around, um, and you can also control visibility using the filters. So, okay, um, now I have fields and additional fields that came from my um, sections in the page layout. And inside that I have all these um, fields. So I can move the fields like this if I want. And you can also define the UI behavior. You want to make it read only. And this is for type. So if you can see here, there's a type. So that's what I'm defining it for. So you can also control that kind of page layout functionality from here. So required, you can make that required from here. Um, this is really cool um, and basically everything you can do from page layout, most of it. I haven't least tried it a lot but um, definitely looks very, very promising. Um, and you can add filter from here so maybe if I go to additional field section I want to make it one column for some reasons um, and maybe I want to also add a filter that only system admin or you know the data admin or anybody who needs to ac access to system fields should see that so you can control that from here just go to your and it's regular um, app builder functionality nothing new there but just it's available now to control the fields from here um, and so yeah that is lightning um, dynamic form so definitely try it out and see how it works out. I'm not sure what the limitations are going to be because it's non-GA. Um, but super excited to try that out. Um, another functionality while we're at the app builder, and this is only for custom objects. I'm going to go here. Let's disable it first. So now you can also control the buttons from Lightning App Builder. So this is something um, that was always uh, involved workarounds because unless it's edit or delete which you can control through profile level security or permission sets um, there's no good way to or clean way to like 
control what, what buttons you want to show the users. Now you can do that, um, enabling dynamic forms, um, dynamic actions, which is also in beta and desktop only feature. So since I already added this, you can, as you can see, you can just add action and add any other, like log a call maybe. Hit done. And all your features will appear here and the original features that still applies. And um, obviously you can control the same visibility right here as well. Fields, um, device and advanced. Advanced has other field things like custom permissions, permission um, user fields and things like that. All right, let's exit out of that. And there's also tips which tells you um, whatever, if you miss something, this page has one or more empty regions. It's fine. Um, another functionality which I don't think much about is um, using keys to move around. So I'm not going to move my mouse and I'm, I can actually use keys and tab functionality to move things around here. So I'm using tab to do all this. Just a small um, good feature. Okay, um, I think that's all in the Lightning App Builder. Hit save. Cool. Um, all right, so let's move on to the next feature. Next feature is around Kanban, Kanban settings. I'm gonna hit back. And you gotta love confetti. Um, so with the last release, we had um, confettis with path. So anytime you are in closed one, you can define a confetti. So now the same settings will also apply for um, Kanban. So let's say you are in Kanban mode. So I'm going to switch to that here. And all the path settings are actually going to be available in Kanban. So um, let's say I move something to... That wasn't close one. Uh, I'm just going to move it to close one. And you have the confetti now because I set it up for the path and you don't have to set it up again for um, Kanban. Another functionality is which is more interesting is now you can hover over or click on the fields. And since it is prospecting, um, I can click on this tiny button here, which will show me all the details that I set it up for in under the path settings. So key fields, I can just edit it from right here, maybe add one more zero, um, hit save, and also guidance for success. So all the path settings actually are going to transfer over to Kanban. Super cool. Um, other few features are, which I won't be showing here, but just want to call out is um, users will now have ability to customize their navigation just like how you can do here, um, users can customize it even in mobile. So, um, and you can control that. And if you want your users not customizing that, you can also control that. I will link you to the release notes for that. Um, cancel. Okay, um, next feature is, um, I think it's a very low use used feature um, itself. Let's go to task and I'm just going to click on the task first to see what it is related to. So it is related to an opportunity. Okay. Um, so we're on the task. The additional functionality is now you can actually add related fields on task page so users can edit or perform any actions on that related record and it also applies for polymorphic and that's the new functionality because before you weren't able to do that um, and if you haven't used this related record um, feature or component it's really cool because uh, and mostly for service um, service reason because if there's a case and and this is a, a, available for all the records all the record pages so let's say if you are in a case and if you want your users to edit or perform any action on related contact or account or even the parent case, you can just pull this component and 
you can say which lookup field you want to use. And let's say I want to say count, hit done. Then you can, I don't have actions available, but let's say if the count object had some actions like edit or any custom actions, that will show up here. And what that means is now when you go back to the task page, you can choose to perform any actions directly from the task. So let's see what I have here. Um, maybe opportunity. Do I have an action there? Okay. Date case. So if you don't have an action, it's going to show you the error. Um, let's, let's just save it. Activate. And the reason it's giving me that is because I don't have this case is this task is currently not associated with the case but the, just the functionality of being able to pull related to and all the different lookup fields this is new um, and I'm pretty sure this is this is super powerful um, let's go back and just to see it in action and I haven't tried this before we're just doing it right now together <clears throat> so Right now it's not associated with a case. I'm just gonna quickly associate it with a case actually. Now I should see the case details here. So that's same functionality. Um, but now you can, you see the pencil here? You can just edit case from right from here. So it uses don't need to go to the case itself to do that. And the same functionality can be used in any object. So if you haven't used it, definitely use it instead of using other workarounds like creating a quick action or creating a flow. Um, sometimes all you need is a related record component to do that. Cool. Um, moving on, I just have a few more. Um, actually, one more. So Federation ID, and if you have uh, enabled single sign-on in an org or have dealt with it, Federation ID was not case was case sensitive. So anytime if your account directly have emails, which is sometimes all upper cases or sometimes it's mixed, um, it was really difficult to set up the single sign on. But now Salesforce has an ability to set it up as case insensitive, which is going to be really helpful for those um, those enterprises. Okay, I think that's all I have for now. Um, definitely check out the release features and just if you are not sure how to check it out, super simple, it's very categorized. So let's say if you're only interested in sales functionality, you can click on that. If you're more interested in health cloud or communities, so everything is super categorized. So you don't have to go through the whole set. I might do a different video on community separately, depending on how many new functionalities are there. Um, but it's very um, user friendly, so definitely check it out, read through it, um, sign up for our org. Thank you so much for watching and let me know if you have any questions.